Hey everyone, this is John with Pro Sound Effects. I'm back again with another how to video for SoundQ. The main purpose of this video is to show you how to best use SoundQ's collection sharing features with your own sounds that you've imported into the app. It's easy enough to share sounds hosted on the cloud already, like those in the SoundQ sound effects or the freesound.org collections, because they already live in the cloud and you don't need to deal with any mapping of file paths. But let's say that instead you want to share a library that you have only located on your computer. In SoundQ, all the collections under the My Collections section will sync to the cloud, but it's important to remember that SoundQ will not sync your audio files, only the metadata stored in the SoundQ database. So because of this, we use a cloud hosting service like Google Drive, Dropbox, or Lucidlink to share the actual audio files. In this example, I'm going to use Google Drive because that's what I'm using, but it will be the exact same process for any other cloud service or local network drive that you're using. So yeah, all you need is to be able to access the files from Finder Explorer on Windows, and you'll be able to easily import these sounds into SoundQ by dragging them in. And uh, yeah, so let's give that a shot. So I'm going to create a new collection in my collections. I'm going to call it Horse Sounds. And I'm going to give it a cool color. And I'm going to give it a unicorn icon. And so, yep, yeah, here's my Google Drive. I have access to it on my Finder already. And here's my Stallion Horse Sounds library that I'm going to import. And we can skip the import log since it all worked fine. And so great. So we see all the sounds are on this horse sounds library now. And because they're in the my collection section, they've already started syncing to the cloud. And in fact, it's already done. You can see this little check mark showing that it finished. So it uploaded not the audio again, it uploaded just the metadata. So all these descriptions, the file names and the file paths are all synced to the cloud. So that means if you were to log in with your same account on any other computer, you'll see this exact same metadata downloaded. And you'll see the horse sounds library uh, collection and all the other collections that I've created here. But remember that the audio files are located on my Google Drive here. So if I wanted to share that with another SoundQ user or even myself, I need to make sure that that user or myself has access to this same Google Drive files on whatever machine is being used. But once you've done that, it's pretty easy to share the collections you've created in SoundQ. You go to the three dot menu here and you go to sharing and permissions. And here, actually, I already typed in this just a second ago, but I typed in my email, John plus video at prosoundeffects.com. It's a different account that I also created. I have multiple testing accounts. And so I'm going to go ahead and invite. So now you see I've shared it with that other account called John Video, and I've made him an editor. So he has the power to add and remove sounds to this collection, just like me, but doesn't have the power to modify properties and metadata, and he can't delete it. So great. Now I'm going to switch over to a different computer. So not the same one, and we'll be able to see how to map to make sure that those files are still accessible in SoundQ on that machine too. All right, here we are on my other computer. I'm on logged into a different SoundQ account now. This is my John video account, just like I said. On this account, I have made no previous collections before, but you can see here the collection that was just shared with us by my other account is here. We've got the icon, the unicorn, the horse sounds. And the first thing you're going to notice is that you can't play any of these sounds, which is very easy to fix. And I'll show you how to do that. And the reason for this is because even though I have actually the same Google Drive on this computer as I did on the other one, as you can see, the My Drive video sounds, Stallion, here's all my horse sounds but the difference is that what was synced to the cloud before was the file path that belonged to the original computer 
which does not match the same file path here on this computer. So what you would want to do when you first click on a sound that can't be loaded because it can't find it, there's two options. There's the relink and the remap. And the difference between these two is very important. The relinker will permanently change this file path metadata value right here. And so that will actually sync to the cloud again if you change this path. And why you don't want to do that is because if I were to change this path and it syncs to the cloud, and this is a shared collection again, when I go back to the other computer, those would then not be able to be found because they're now using that new user, that new file path. So that's why this remapper exists. So the idea of the remapper is just basically on the fly, it detects some portion of a path and you can replace it with something else. And it just happens on this computer. It doesn't sync that to the cloud. So whenever you see this, we click the remapper. You can do it on one file and it'll apply to all of them in this case. It opens up the remapper on the left side. You're going to want this to be the path that it's looking to replace. So we don't want to get too specific because so, we want it to apply to all the horse sounds in Stallion. So I'm going to remove this miscellaneous at the end of the path since that was just one of the subfolders. So, But it can be all the way to Stallion. So now it's going to find this path all the way to Stallion, and anywhere this appears, it's going to be replaced by this path here. And so you, since these are paths that are actually on your computer now, you can click this green icon here to open it up, go to the Google Drive, go to the same folder again, the Stallion, and open it up. And once you're done, you press this green check mark here. And as soon as you do that, you see right away that all these sounds have been remapped. And so now you can play them easily. And it was able to locate the file. And that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. It's just about making sure that the paths actually match so that sound cue is able to find them. And then you can share your collections of your local sounds with anyone. Okay, so that's about it for this video. The last thing I'll show is just that this shared collection from this account from John Video, since I'm just an editor, I can't access the sharing and permissions because I'm not allowed to share it with other people. I can unsubscribe from it, but other than that, I can add and remove sounds and those changes will sync, but I'm not allowed to edit the metadata. I'm not allowed to change the colors or the icons of the collections unless I was also made an admin on this account. But yep, so anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope that this was helpful in understanding the remapper and how to sync and share your sound cue collections with other people. Thanks.